It's a frigid late December morning. As you can hear from the sound of the snow crunching under my feet, winter has set in upon us. When the temperatures are this cold, having an aircraft engine preheated is highly recommended. Continental Service Letter SIL-03-1 pertains to cold weather operation and engine preheating. The letter states that preheating is required whenever the engine has been exposed to temperatures at or below 20 degrees Fahrenheit for a period of two hours or more. In this video, I will discuss how I use a Wi-Fi hotspot to activate a reef engine preheater that I have installed in my Cessna 150. Visibility four, ceiling one thousand nine hundred. Overcast temperature minus one eight Celsius. Dew point minus two one altimeter three zero two six. Hamilton Municipal Airport runway lighting activation frequency one two two point seven. Well, unfortunately, it's that time of year again, and as you can hear from the Hamilton AWAS, it's going to be a very cold day. Um, Right now, temperatures are around 1 degrees Fahrenheit, and um, other than being cold out, it should be a great day for flying. Um, I always preheat my engine, starting late fall, through the winter, and then I continue into early spring. And I use the reef preheat system, which consists of four hot bands that clamp around the base of the four cylinders on my Continental 0200, and then one hot strip that epoxies to the bottom of the oil sump. And this system creates uh, uniform heating throughout the engine, and I even um, I even have uh, warmth into my propeller. So I have a cover on the cowling end cover, though, and that, that definitely helps out. Now the five heating elements are all attached and they're connected together to a three-pronged plug that I access through the front of my cowling. Um, later this afternoon, we'll head up to Hamilton Airport where I can keep my plane, and we'll bring my infrared heat sensing gun and I'll get some temperature readings throughout the engine. Um, now, I have about a 30 minute drive to the airport and it's just not convenient for me to drive back and forth just to plug in a preheater. And if um, the weather was to turn bad or for some reason I decided not to fly, then the last thing I would want to do is drive all the way out to the airport just to unplug the preheater. And for this reason, I purchased the Verizon Jetpack, which allows me to have 3G and 4G Wi-Fi at my hangar. The initial cost was $50 for the jetpack. They offered a, a $50 rebate, so it was $100, you know, with the $50 rebate. So I paid $50, and um, the service adds about, well, it adds $10 a month onto my existing cellular service. I don't really, the data, you know, I don't use much data at all, so that doesn't really add up at all. So it's $10 a month um, on my existing cell service bill. Now, I have the jetpack inside a metal hanger and it always gives a reliable signal. I've, um, I've walked out of my hangar, you know, I've um, paired it with my phone before, walked out of my hangar, went down about three or four hangars, and you know, I still have great signal. Um, I've never had an issue with it. So if you were to go this route, if you were to put a Wi-Fi in your hangar, I would recommend that you look into a Wi-Fi hub that can be supplied from your cell service provider as an add-on to your cellular, cellular service, and then you're, you're just paying that um, lower monthly fee of you know, $10 or, what, or whatever it is. Um, here's a look at the, this is the Wi-Fi, um, MiFi 7730L from Verizon. So this is how I get my Wi-Fi out of the hangar. And then next I'll talk about this, um, this mini smart socket. All this is is just a switch. And that plugs right into my existing outlet at the hangar. The three prong preheater plug um, is connected to a lead cord which plugs into the smart socket. Um, the smart sockets are now very common and 
as you can see they consist of an outlet and then that pairs to my Wi-Fi and this allows me to download an app through my um, you know, to my cell phone or, or um, iPad or a computer and um, the app has an on off button that gives you instant notice of whether the plug is on or off. The app also includes a timer and if you choose to use this um, it can be beneficial. I use the timer especially when um, you know I'm going to fly in the morning. What I'll do is just set the, the timer you know to go on like six hours before I get to the airport so now I don't have to get up in the middle of the night to turn on my preheater. I just set the timer to go off at you know three in the morning if I'm going to be there at nine o'clock or whatever. And if you choose to share expenses with other pilots that are based at your airport, as long as they're within the Wi-Fi range, then you're able to pair up to 50 of the smart outlets with a single Verizon jetpack. And the jetpack is also password protected for your security, so you don't have to worry about you know, someone getting into that and using all your data up. So at this time, um, I'll go ahead, we'll turn on the preheater. It's about 8.30 in the morning and it's, um, it's 1 degrees Fahrenheit out and it's forecasted to stay below 10 degrees all day which with these temperatures this should be an ideal day to test the, um, the Retief preheat system. So I click on, this is a, I think it's Tuya Smart App it's called and I just clicked it on and, and there's my switch right there so it'll light up white so you won't see it when it goes on but so I just touch it, just like that, switches on. And then let me turn it back off for a second for you. And down here you can see the you have the countdown, the timer. So you have all your settings down there if you want to go that route. I just pulled into Hamilton Airport. It's 3.30 in the afternoon. As you can see, it's a balmy 9 degrees Fahrenheit. So here's the jetpack from Verizon that I was talking about earlier. Uh, that's my Wi-Fi and that just plugs into an outlet. And I just leave that sitting up here. It's always on. And then the switch that I was talking about, uh, the Wi-Fi switch is right here. So my preheater plugs into the switch. And we activated it this morning, which turned the switch on. And then to shut the switch off, that's all there is to it. And the Wi-Fi switch shuts the preheater off to the engine. So we're at about 48 degrees on the propeller. And on the case, We're at 80 degrees on the case. And let's see, this is where the bands are, right here. They wrap around the base of the cylinders. So there's four of them, one for each cylinder. And then I also have a heating element on the oil sump. So the cylinder's at 82 degrees, 85 degrees. Out at the cylinder head, we're at 68 degrees, 65 degrees on the left cylinder. And let's come around here and see if we can get some other readings on the back of the engine. On the accessory cover, we're at 60 degrees. The starter is 72 degrees. And on the oil sump, 
we're at 78 degrees. Clear prop. The cabin warms up nicely after only a few minutes in the air. I've really come to appreciate the Cessna heater during these cold winter nights. I watch the sun disappear over the horizon. The vivid lights that surround our Earth slowly appear, and this is what makes winter night flying all the worthwhile. As I aviate back to the airport, what a gratifying feeling to make a few clicks of the mic to then find a row of runway lights magically appear before my eyes. If you have any questions concerning preheat, feel free to comment and I'll do my best to answer. I couldn't be more satisfied with a Reef Systems preheat product. I'll leave a contact link for them below. Until next time, stay current, fly safe.